there's Andy Vier in the... Oh, <laughs> black and white photos. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 is this like to protect the ears or whatever? Like a little kind of headband, like... It's awesome, eh? Do you know, like, Head, yeah, not quite headband. It was headband, like a, just like headband, a strap, like, eh? Strap, yeah. <laughs> Set me in the top right corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got your hair back, mate. <laughs> 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 oh, now he's laughing. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Front Row Show. A special guest this week, uh, Will Jordan. Will, well, welcome along, mate. How are you? How are you feeling? How's the body? Real privilege to be in the. What do you call it? It's a bus or a little caravan or? Yeah, it's a, it's the food truck. Is it a food truck? Is it or? Yeah. Food truck. Yeah. Food truck. Patiently waiting for my moment to get in here. We've had a few of the big dogs in. I've just sort of slid in towards the end, but. No, nah, it's been good, so yeah, looking forward to a bit of a chat. Awesome, mate. My nine-year-old son's here at the moment, Arthur. And um, I told him, I was talking to you, and he was frothing, mate, like you are his favourite. And I said to him, what do you want to know from Will? And he said, Dad, did Will always know that he wanted to be in Orbic? So, did you? Um, I think it's one of those ones where, like, when I was really young, like at primary school and that, I always looked up to the All Blacks and the Crusaders, blokes like yourself, and... Um, you, had, oh, you, had that, you, had that, you had that kind of dream. Me too, me too. Um, and then probably as I got a bit older, I went to high school and that, it probably wasn't something that I was like consciously chasing. Um, I was playing halfback at the time during most of high school. I was actually a little fella. Um, and so, yeah, like I was enjoying my footy, but it wasn't anything that I was kind of taking overly seriously. And even after I left school and made um, New Zealand in the 20s, then got a deal with Tasman and then from there the Crusaders and then it all happened pretty quickly. My sort of main thing with not just rugby but all sport was just trying to enjoy it really when I was growing up. I was a pretty competitive kid so um, yeah just enjoyed playing kind of any kind of sport and being active and I guess as I got older um, yeah things sort of happened quickly. And Did you go to fullback from halfback? I trialled for the first team in year 12 initially as a halfback and didn't make it probably because my pass was reasonably horrific. <laughs> the first five or so he kicked me at his ankles. I, it was more of a kind of running or kicking on than a passing on, which was a bit of an issue. I ended up kind of covering fullback for a half and played a right and then ended up playing a bit on the wing for the rest of the year, 4 to first 15. And then, yeah, as I sort of went towards year 13, thought give fullback a go and kind of been there for most of the time now. But I think, yeah, as I sort of got a bit bigger and grew a bit, I got a bit faster. Um, and yeah, it sort of went from there. What are some other hidden talents that we don't know about? Surely there's something. Can you sing oh, or, you know, but um, a dancer? The musical side isn't something that probably comes to me that naturally. Um, <laughs> whether, it's, whether it's singing or dancing. I haven't got the same sort of rhythm as George. <laughs> but I enjoy really just, yeah, in the background, kind of maybe tapping my foot or strumming along. But um, yeah, I've got to be pretty excited to sort of bust out a um, huge amount of dance moves and stuff. How's your golf going this uh, this tour, Brass? It's been alright to be fair. Tour golf can be quite difficult. Like you sort of play your home course throughout the year, build up a nice handicap, and then tour yeah, golf. And then you get on tour, and yeah, things are a bit different, and you kind of struggle a bit. Getting kind of out of the game and having a bit of fun, in that sort of sense, like during a big test week, is actually quite important to kind of decompress. You talk through strategies on the field about how to deal with, you know, making mistakes or pressure and whatnot. But then when we go out on the golf course, that's just completely out the window. Yeah. Like, there's no sort of deep breathing or, you know, process or task focus kind of going on. It's like, yeah, a whole bunch of frustration. Yeah, grip it and rip it kind of thing. What does it mean to you to be an All Black? When you put on the black jersey and you play on the weekend, it's a pretty powerful kind of feeling, and particularly doing it with mates around you. But I think you really kind of understand how much it means to the country, the people around you when you go to like smaller towns and that, like where they don't necessarily see the All Blacks a lot and you kind of mm. see how pumped up they are to just have a bit of a conversation or like how much it fizzes people up to kind of meet you in that. So that's always pretty humbling and um, just, yeah, writes home about what a special kind of group it is and um, how cool it is to be a part of it. Andy, um, Johnny, Andy Ellis here from NZR Plus. Hey, um, Andy, firstly, the way you've talked about the All Blacks over the last couple of years has been very, very humbling. Um, there's a lot of respect between our countries, and I just think that's a, that's a fantastic way to go about the game. It's easy to throw nice at teams these days and, and try and wind each other up, but there's a great respect between our countries, and I think that's a really nice way to, it's presented really, really nicely in the last couple of years. Um, that's not my question. <laughs> my question is, um, I don't love being the underdog. I went to Dublin on Monday quickly and I, I picked up on that 
really well. Um, but you guys Has are it not turned? <laughs> Has it not turned over there? We've been away from it. Sorry, mate, sorry. Um, you're, you're the number one ranked team at the moment. How do you guys talk to your team about like being the top dog? What, what, what sort of discussions do you have about walking towards that pressure? Well, um, yeah, I, I suppose an inferiority complex is, is what's happened in the past as far as getting to world number one and thinking that we're going to fall off a cliff um, because this shouldn't be happen, happening uh, to Ireland, like, you know, but I think what we've learned to do is, is throw ourselves into big challenges and try to meet them head on and, and embrace that. Um, you know, we, we don't want to be second best. You've seen with the All Blacks over the last 20 years, you know, um, that's why they're so, so much um, respected because it's very hard to stay at the top. You know, the, the, the guys that are the favourites are always the ones that I've always looked at throughout all my career and envied really because of how hard it is to do that. That's the place that we want to be because if you're serious about getting better and being the team that you, that you, that you want to be, that's, that's the world that you've got to live in. Um, first presser, I don't know if presses are really for me, nowhere near as polished as my old mate um, Geo. I actually got real rattled in the last minute, my heart started racing, I went red and then I just started waffling, I just went too long. Got told off mid-story, kind of just got the job done you know and uh, got the answer I was after too so take it. Before we start. Irish scarf has got to go. If you've ever watched Emily in Paris, this is the Irish equivalent. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited today to first to go around. This is the Saint Germain des Prés area mm -hmm. of Paris, and it's a huge cultural, iconic place in Paris. And I'm also going to take you around my local area. All right, let's get into it. So, where have you brought me to? I have brought you to the Café des Deux Magots. Mm -hmm. And if you're on TikTok a lot, you'll know that this place has the famous TikTok viral hot chocolate. So that's why there's almost oh, always a queue at this place, okay. actually. And also a lot of famous people used to come to this cafe. It has some Irish roots in a way because James Joyce used to come here all the time, as well as loads of writers like Ernest Hemingway. This was a hangout of Picasso as well. So it's really an icon in Paris. So on your TikTok, yeah. you do a lot of videos and a lot of it's about informing, you know, tourists coming to Paris. Yeah, my most viral video was yes. about that. It was about the biggest mistakes people make when they yep. come to Paris. Okay, so, so what are some of the biggest mistakes? I think wearing a beret because it makes you look like a tourist, even uh, though they are cute. Oh yeah, one of those. Yeah. Oh, that's my go-to. No way! So this is one of the most famous pastry shops in mm -hmm. Paris. Marie Antoinette made it very famous, actually. She brought macaron to Paris from Italy. Originally, they were an Italian pastry, but they were made into something French. So that's why Latterie is so famous, because it's the place to get macaron. OK, yeah. well, I'm looking forward to trying this. Is it your shirt or mine? It's going to be my shirt. Right, let's go. <laughs> Perfect. Clear, clear. All right, we're clear. This is very iconic and very famous in Paris. It's called mm. Les Bouquinistes. And look at this, like, I mean, it looks like something out of a movie. Harry Potter. Right? Like when you go into like an old library. It's like something out of Hogwarts. I really love it. And I think you can always find interesting things here that like you wouldn't really find in a normal shop. Yeah. So it's a good souvenir idea too. Yeah. So I'm taking you now to the Louvre Museum. The real thing in real life. Thanks. Exactly, I brought you to the perfect place to eat macarons. It's good. So we have green for Ireland and then the closest thing we could get to all black <laughs> for New Zealand. It's a chocolate one. I mean, it'll do. <laughs> After you, ma'am. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. No problem. Woo. <laughs> yeah, Stacey, NZR oh, Plus. Handshake. Special. Special. Pound it. Yes, well, you're in my world now, okay? So you just got to pay attention here. Um, I just want you to go in there confident, mm -hmm. ask a great question that gets an even better answer. Just a bit of traction is what we're looking for. So not too serious, it can be fun. Oh, it can be real fun. Follow me. Okay, coming. So, any hands for questions? Uh, on the topic of bugs, um, do you, have you discussed bed bugs and how to count it uh, while you're staying in Paris? Is that the bed bug thing? Yeah, um, I, I caught the back end of it earlier. I really don't know. I know that. 
Hey, Rossi. It's Stacey Waka from NZR Plus here. Um, it's obviously going to be a massive occasion this weekend, um, playing at a French crowd, home crowd. Do you think the traffic light system is going to be much more important than ever because it is going to be so loud out there? Yeah, the traffic light system is, 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 is basically have four different meanings and, and you know it, it, it changes every game. Some people think it just means kicks, other people think it's uh, you know play slower but for us it's really just a way of communication to get messages to the players but also to find out uh, what the medical and SNC staff are thinking. When you said Russ could talk I was like oh yeah but he really can talk. Oh he can talk. <laughs> he makes you feel like your question is right. <laughs> That's what I love about it. I was, thought it was going to be a bit more intense, to be honest. Well, you did a lot more work than me, so... <laughs> All right, Stacey, it's the French team now. They speak French, and you're on your own. <sighs> Off you go. Wish me luck. I feel like everyone has laptops out doing some work, and I've got nothing, so... I might just play on my phone and pretend I'm doing some research. Look busy. I know how to ask, how are you? Will that be good enough? Ça va? Antoine, on connaît l'importance qu'il a, le rôle qu'il a, c'est le capitaine de l'équipe. Donc forcément, uh, on est satisfait surtout de son retour. I didn't even know what they were saying, so... L'occupation serait de savoir si ça ne le gêne pas en termes de vision et notamment d'audition. J'imagine que c'était pour ça le, le test. Man, I just want to redo the whole thing. I really got it. James... I blame you for leaving me in the dark. Hot seat. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> We have to be respectful, so we're we going to let them to play now in black. He said, no way. I remember looking at the World Cup as you walked out going, wow, this is, this is real now. Jerry Dussequois, Richie McCaw, they've been here before. The drop goal attempt. What was McCullough to do it? We had a couple of opportunities to have taken a drop goal, but we'd never practiced it, never talked about it. If I say that, does that mean I'm panicking? Well, you can always expect something different from the French. I remember the guys, you know, who were so excited, they said, come on, eat, come on, start, start, start. I said, no, no. Right up to back level. New Zealand in real trouble here. He made the comment, he goes, we can't let what happened in 99 happen again. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Where's that come from? You can see in the eyes of the opening that the case is starting to ask himself some questions, you know. Absolutely stunned, Richie McCaw. And then all of a sudden, I was like, I don't know what you do here. Do something! Finally, we're here. We're going to play a final against New Zealand. It's incredible, you know. It goes to Salvia. We had so much respect for the old blood. Winning against them is like writing his name in, uh, in history, you know? And I, I remember thinking to myself, I'm not going to let this opportunity slip. And the All Blacks are the world champions. Promise are still in the world cup. It's going to be a long night. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you wish you're still doing it? <laughs>